friends. So we're gonna go through a circuit. You could do it as a circuit. Um, I personally like to always do two exercises back to back. I like to have that level of like getting my heart rate pumping. So we've got four exercises. Then we're gonna finish with a gun show. All right, gotta get the pipes big because uh, it's just fun. And I, I gotta tell you this, you know, if you're training athletes, I'll let them do curls at the end. They wanna do arms every day. Trust me, three sets of curls at the end isn't gonna kill anybody, but they leave with a pump and they're in a good mood. So when you're training others, there's that uh, trade-off is what do they love to do, mm -hmm. not just what is needed. So we're gonna start with an offset carry, which means uh, two different weights in two different positions or something that's kind of odd and awkward. And to me, that replicates life, it replicates sport because you're not perfectly balanced and weighed in each hand. So we're gonna change it up on the regular. This is full body strength. I often say there's three things athletes need, carries, calisthenics, um, and sleds. And under the calisthenics, that's sprinting and jumping. So after we carry, we're gonna do some sort of an odd grip, thick grip, or odd object, clean and press. So it's a full body lift, but you're doing a pushing motion, okay? We're gonna couple that with a row that's gotta be thick grip or grip, grip centered. And then we're gonna throw something, okay? We're gonna throw heavy med balls from various directions. We're gonna throw lighter medicine balls for power. This is tremendous for having that transfer of training, but you'll notice when we train, we're gonna mix up the implements so the body is not good at only heavy, good at only light. We want it to kind of build what I call agile, mobile, and hostile, all right? So I wanna be strong in many different positions. And uh, what this does from an athletic standpoint is it prepares the body for the oh shit factor. Like, oh, I've never done that before. You wanna more be like, oh, my body's been there before. I feel strong in these things. Basically, you wanna be capable. This right here would be great for an athlete, military, law enforcement who has to you know, chase people, hop over fences, then you're grabbing and wrestling with people. This stuff would be great. And throwing is a great way to develop power because you're releasing the implement. Uh, when I started training people, you know, we threw car tires, stones, kettlebells. You know, we would be training out on fields. And I had listened to uh, Juan Carlos Santana early. Remember JC Santana? Yeah, yeah early conversations with him he told me in the 70s when he was training in martial arts they would be on the beach and they would like clean and press a stone for a mile clean wow. press throw for a mile then they would come back and like carry the stone but through uh, knee deep water and i thought to myself it was like conversations with louis simmons break the rules of training whereas hey we're gonna do five sets of this sometimes it's too perfect so you wanna do stuff that just, you know, quote unquote, breaks the rules. So I used to call that no rules training. So we're gonna go through here. The first round might be kind of moderate intensity to build, mm -hmm. and then we go. You know, you should be pretty warmed up by this point where you're not doing a, mil you know, you can't be warming up forever. Yeah. All right? Let's get it. Let's do it, working time. This is a zombie killer workout, 100%. Zombie killers, and That's why we're day. here. All right, we're getting after this workout. Well, we've been getting after it. We're gonna do this last round for you guys to watch what we've been doing. Zach's gonna talk about some things we did in some previous rounds. Uh, but the first thing we have is gonna be some sort of offset carry. So yep. let's dive into it. Offset carry is tremendous for building that full body, like grit and what we call durability. You know, in between some sets, we were talking about friends that we have training in uh, the, their in SEAL teams. So how do we train them? And it's like, we wanna train them for longevity. And so carrying things with different weights in each hand or different positions, it forces the body to build this like, uh, I don't like that word, like it's this buzzword, robustness, just like you're durable. You know, you have this kind of strength of your body that's used to being off balance. And so we did, you can see we've got a lot of stuff kind of scattered here, but we have this uh, rolling thunder with chains Coach Joe had it in the rack position while holding the 150 pound globe dumbbell in the other hand. The interesting thing about those old dumbbells is their handles are bent. So they're like peeling out of your hands. So you get this grip strength without it being a thick handled dumbbell, but it's also 150. And uh, we also had 
these thick dumbbells that we showed earlier. Um, over there, you could see the Thomas Inch replica next to the 106. So I did that where I have 106 in one hand, uh, like 60 something in the other with a thick grip. And so it, it changes. You can feel the, the different effect it's got on your body and your body's either getting pulled or you're fighting to stabilize. And uh, so we're gonna do a carry here at the same time. We'll go two different uh, objects in each hand. We get to the end of the turf, you put it down and then you return. And also, uh, you know what it does? Every time we pick it up is a deadlift or like a mm -hmm. power clean of mm -hmm. sorts. So you're getting this one rep at a time. And if you were to do five sets, putting it down midway, you've done 10 singles of a power clean or deadlift. So this exercise is kind of sneaking in. It's also very time efficient. I was uh, training last uh, Thursday and uh, it got away from me. I was telling you, I love to train in the morning. I didn't train at all. And I'm like, I can't go home. So what did I do? Five sets of carries, mm -hmm. but I did two laps in a row. And so I got uh, five sets of 200 feet. And I said, well, might as well just bang out some pull-ups and push-ups. Did them here, rode my bike home, more push-ups. Okay. So you build momentum, but when in doubt, pick something up and carry it. Yeah. You could even uh, insert it into your warm-up. A light carry, next set is medium, third set starts working, third, fourth, and fifth are, fifth are tough sets. Yeah, yeah. I, I love this because of the, how time efficient it's been, right? Like we're getting f our four or five movements in, yep. we're running through a couple rounds, our heart rate's up, we're getting a pump. And it's like, for, for most of the people that are probably watching this, you guys have those time constraints. So if you throw something like this in, whatever, a couple times a week, best bang for your buck over not doing anything or like missing your training session because you don't think you have time. You have time, you just gotta be efficient with it. 100%. Thick wrist on the Thomas in. This is the hard part, is trying to pick it up. That's an oblique race. <laughs> It's like an awkward deadlift here. You got the awkward clean. Gnarly. And grip work. Gnarly. A lot of grip work. Yeah. Your forearms are the size of my legs. <laughs> They're pumped for sure. Woo, uh, right. Traps and forearms are the new abs. Yeah. Just saying. Well, you'll appreciate this. When I'm on a beach now, yeah. right? Like people would always be like, how much do you think I curl? Now I'm like, yo, what's his carry? What's his, what's his deadlift? Look at the back. <laughs> yeah. like, if the back looks gnarly, and my buddy John Wellborn said that, played in the NFL 10 years, he goes, if the guy I was lining up against was big chest, big arms, but like flat backside, easy paycheck. Yeah. He's like, but if he had kind of like knock knees, big hips, big back, it's like, I'm gonna earn my paycheck <laughs> that game. It's so true. He's like that farm boy strength. So true. He calls it field strong. And uh, you know, you're in Pennsylvania, wrestling is like, you know, God in Pennsylvania. Years and years ago, I remember asking somebody, how come, when it's the Pennsylvania, New Jersey, like championship wrestling match, it was called New Jersey versus Pennsylvania. 90% of the time, 80% of the time, Pennsylvania would win. And so this coach said, any kid who wrestles in Pennsylvania has a climbing rope in his garage. Yeah, yeah. And so they have a climbing rope or they start their morning working on a farm, like mm -hmm. carrying feed for the horses. So also when people say, I don't want my kid to strength train in many parts of the country, seven-year-olds are quote-unquote strength training before just doing manual labor yeah. and so it gets you strong but you know what it is it's not fancy it's not flashy you know in our world you sometimes are like well will this thing get views are people going to do it but i'm interested in what works. what works sometimes the fancy stuff or oftentimes that can only be done if i'm in a one-on-one -on -one setting so when i'm training athletes here you know, this morning, I think there was like eight guys. Sometimes there's 15, sometimes there's four. At my high school, it's 45 to like 90 kids in a group. Trust me, I'm not doing fancy stuff, but they're always carrying, they're always jumping, they're always hill sprinting. And we do these basic things 
uh, and you know, say simple things savagely well. Jim Kiertsy said that from uh, Kennesaw State. So I said, dude, your football guys, they throw med balls, they jump, they squat, they clean. He goes, yeah, simple things done savagely well. Oh yeah. And I, you know who else says that? The SEALs. Yeah. They master shooting. They, they could do the job without fancy equipment yeah, yeah. if needed. We're doing what we uh, coined like an odd clean and press, meaning it's gotta be an awkward object. It could be one of the globe dumbbells that has a bent handle, a thick dumbbell. Uh, Joe is gonna do the 100 pound uh, medicine ball. These are from XD Fit, they're made with Kevlar. And uh, this is interesting because the barbell, you're able to kind of have this stable trunk. You don't have to lean back. You know, you can poke your head through. This med ball is falling here. You have to lean back. So you're in this imperfect position. And now your body learns to be strong in the imperfect position. This was uh, spoken about in the book, Super Training. Mel Sif called it imperfect training. You know, we call it strong man, odd objects. And as I said earlier, it prepares the body for when the shit hits the fan. Yeah, yeah. So your body's not like in a weird position and you get scared. You're like, I've been here before. Yeah. So Joe's going to do a muscle clean with it. And then he's got to lean back to press and he pokes the head through. Now he's muscling it down. Earlier he was kind of dropping it. I said, try controlling it down like the guys did in the original York Barbell Gym. They couldn't drop the weights which built tremendous size and strength. They had to do eccentrics, right? They didn't just do uh, explosive concentrics. You see how he has to squeeze the ball, which also builds isometric yeah, strength. You feel like your back, yep. your forearms, your yeah. arms, that like crush strength. Marty Gallagher said to me, he goes, Zach, this style of training hits the in-between muscles. Oh yeah. Yeah, I love it. Good, Let me, I'm gonna hit a set here with the 70. So remember my, uh, Legs are the size of Joe's forearms, okay? So flat back as much as you can. If your back rounds a little bit, the world is not gonna end, but you need to be locked in versus loose. So you're in that imperfect position, but you're, you're, you're tight enough. So pull fast, chin out of the way, press. I could squat it down, pull. Nice. Yeah. Oof. Oof. Good, so that's the odd clean and press. And what we did is every set, we did a different style clean and press. And uh, that's really taking like the conjugate approach to an extreme level. And for me, it's exciting. I've been lifting for 33 years, so I like changing it up. Yeah, for it gets, sure. It's exciting. All right, guys, so we're going to go through now the thick grip rowing. Now, we don't always train like this. It's just like a crazy day where we want to shock the body. So what I wanted to challenge Joe with was like a medley, similar to a strongman medley when you're carrying stones, sandbags, kegs, going up in weight. We're going to do different rowing variations, grip focused, where he's going up in weight. So we're going to start here. He's going to do fingertip row. You want me to go, Joe, or you? Uh, I'll go. Each go? All right. Yeah, yeah. So, again, let me sneak out behind you. He's going to go fingertips into the center mass bell. Band is attached. He's going to do three each arm. Back stays pretty much flat. Pull back with the elbow. Okay, three reps. Now we're going to go over here. We're going to go with a towel through the kettlebell. Same weight. Now it's a different style of grip. So you're gonna do three. Normally, I would bump up the reps more, but for the sake of time on the video, we'll just do threes, okay? You could do with your arm on the leg, could go arm off the leg. Now he's gonna go to the thick dumbbell, okay? So they're all bent about 70 pounds. Grip starts to really get worked here. And so you gotta focus on making that back integrate with grip. And then he goes with the circus dumbbell, which I actually think this is from Coney Island Circus Strongman days. So you can see the dumbbell is trying to peel out of his hand. He's got three reps. Okay, okay. So see the other one. See how the left hand does here. Punish the left hand. Punish. Punish the weakness out. Try it. Tip. <laughs> nice. And so he did 12 reps 
Woo! Of rowing. That's solid. Yeah, but we switched up the impact of the yeah. grip. Um, I'm gonna show you guys one more, and I'm gonna do two different weights here. So I got a 70 right here, okay? And I'm gonna go pair it up with the 50. And now, I've got two different weights. And they're pulling me more to one side. And so the trunk has to get stable. Why do I emphasize so much trunk work? Because if your back is weak, then it's like everything is weak. I feel like a strong man, a strong athlete, has strong hands and a strong back. Five, four, three, there you go. Come on. Two, yeah, nice. one, boom. So fingertips, no bands, but just the awkward setting. Yeah. All right. All right, team. So I'm with my boy, Coach Joe. Which, by the way, guys, this was great. When Joe. When I met Joe, he was so, and still is so passionate, but when he was on uh, my membership website, his username was Yuri Zatmary. <laughs> like, uh, what's Yuri's last name, the famous weightlifter? Uh, I know, uh, it's just escaping me. Son of a bitch, uh, yeah, 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 we were doing all the history, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, as Arnold said in Pumping Iron, the blood is rushing to the muscles, okay? <laughs> so it left our brain. So we're gonna do um, throwing. We got the 70 pound ball, and we are gonna throw from different angles. Now we actually did some cool stuff where we were throwing it to each other and then uh, running to the other side. So we're gonna do a clean and throw forward. Next rep, we're gonna do like a suplex throw. And then the next rep, we're gonna throw to our side. Now if I throw to one side, I wanna throw to the other. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this training. This is heavy. Then what we're gonna do is almost like contrast training go from heavy to a uh, eight pound med ball. Yeah. So when you throw those lighter med balls, you get to go through different planes of motion. And again, I mentioned it earlier, for power development, releasing objects is very important. So you've got jump training, sprint training, you have plyometrics for the upper body, which is a jump for the upper body, like clapping push-ups. then you're throwing stuff. And uh, it helps you like kind of like unleash that power. So we do a lot of that when we're training. So we're gonna start here. So Joe's gonna stand across. You could do, if you don't have a partner, even better, you throw it and run up to it. And if you wanna do the Coach Joe challenge, you could clean and press a stone for a mile. <laughs> I'll record it, and as my buddy Joe DeSanto Spartan says, like people will do, you know, he'll be like, I'll send you a t-shirt. Yeah. It's amazing, people are well ready to die for t-shirts. All right, so one mile clean and press throw of a stone and you'll get a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna have to be out on like uh, the grass. Please don't do this, you know, in the local town uh, street. Yeah, don't, we never said to do that. Here we go, flat back, pull, yeah. So that's the front one, okay, throw. Now we go into the suplex throw. Here. Ah. It up. And now we do our lateral throw. Ah. Ah. So you're building power from all different planes. Nice. So now we move to speed throwing. Okay? Find yourself a brick wall. Before I owned a gym, we would go to uh old playgrounds that had like walls for yeah, like racquetball. Yeah. Yep, uh, schools in the summertime when they're shut down, we'd use the wall. And I remember early days training kids at the school and I saw like an undercover cop car and I was like, you know, reading about how it's illegal to run your business, you know, out of your home. And I was like, oh my God, are they gonna arrest me? Are they here to arrest me while I'm training athletes? We were doing sleds, sprinting hills, pushing the truck. And I was like, I'll do it. I'll go to prison for training kids to be strong. Okay, so we're gonna do a uh, med ball complex. Lateral throw, five each. Overhead throw for five. The lateral throw is rotational hip power. Overhead throw is trunk stability and dynamic like core strength. I hate that word core, but it's like dynamic power through the trunk. And then we're gonna do chest pass, five rapid. So it's reactive strength and power. And because we're doing 20 reps, what does that become? I like to go simple and not 
try to like, people like to say the force, the force vector <laughs> of the kilograms. No, we're building power endurance. Why? Because you're doing extended uh, work of power. So when you're training guys, you want to build muscle, time under tension, high reps. You want to get strong, heavier weight, low and moderate reps. You want to build power, move the weights very fast, move the objects fast, sprint, throw, jump. Okay, here we go. Five each side. And I'm going to start on my non-dominant side. When I train athletes, I actually make them do more reps. So if you're a baseball player and you're a righty, I go do like eight to 10 to your non-dominant side. I'll just do five to everything. Here we go. People jumped out of their seat. Breaks the camera. Five inside. Here we go. Good rotation. No. Could do feet this way, or you could step and throw. All right, guys. So. We just went through that circuit. We did about three or four rounds. Absolutely a kick-ass workout. Very simple, time efficient. Sometimes it's fun to just go back to your roots. I was saying to Zach, all of this has come full circle for me, right? Like I spent years trying to get really strong. You know, now I'm trying to get a little bit more athletic and kind of think about longevity. So these are the workouts I did 10 years ago that I'm starting to implement back into my training right now. Um, so I think you guys will really enjoy this and have a lot of fun. But Zach's a, a great guy, great coach, and a mentor. Uh, please go and follow him on all social media, subscribe to his channel, and uh, we just really appreciate it. So we're just having fun, getting after it, and uh, stay lean, me strength machine, guys.